Curious whether you're a saving superstar or a spending champ? Most folks lean toward saving, with about 59% of Americans considering themselves savvy savers according to a 2019 Charles Schwab survey. But, in a more recent study, 63% of the same group were found to be living paycheck to paycheck. Looks like there's a bit of a gap between our financial dreams and our money moves. Many of us have grown up believing that saving is the golden ticket to wealth. But hey, here's the twist. Saving is only part of the game. The real secret sauce is smart investing. What holds many back from investing? Fear of losing our hard-earned money. After all, we've worked hard to stash it away. But here's the kicker. Parking money in an FDIC-insured bank account might seem safe, but it's almost certain to lose value over time due to low interest rates and inflation. Good news? Making savvy investment choices can dial down the risk and pump up the rewards without feeling like you're tossing coins in Vegas. And don't forget to hit subscribe and like for more Savvy Financial Advice. Let's get you started with some key questions. Why should you invest? Saving and investing are frequently debated concepts in the world of finance. They both play crucial roles in managing your money, acting as complementary approaches rather than distinct choices. Think of saving as the initial phase in your financial journey. While saving money on its own doesn't directly generate wealth, it provides the necessary funds to initiate the investment process. Investing, on the other hand, is where your money gets to work. At a basic level, investing helps protect your funds from losing value due to inflation, the gradual increase in the cost of goods and services. It serves as a guard against the decreasing purchasing power of your savings over time. On a grander scale, particularly when adopting a long-term investment strategy, there's the potential to benefit from compounding interest. This concept allows your initial investment to grow and the profits earned from that growth also generate more earnings, setting off a cycle of multiplying wealth. It's akin to planting a tree whose seeds grow into more trees, resulting in an expanding forest of wealth. Thus, while saving and investing are often seen as opposing strategies, they are, in fact, interconnected tools that, when used together, offer a solid financial foundation for achieving long-term financial goals. How much should you save versus invest? When it comes to determining the ideal amount to save, it's important to recognize that each investor's situation is unique. However, the general consensus suggests that saving as much as possible is the best approach. As a starting point, a reasonable guideline is to set aside 20% of your income. Of course, more savings are always advantageous, but the 20% benchmark provides a solid base for accumulating a substantial amount of capital over your working years. At the outset, direct these savings toward establishing an emergency fund equivalent to about three to six months worth of regular expenses. Once this emergency fund is in place, the surplus money that isn't required for immediate expenses should be directed towards investments. Effectively investing these funds over an extended period can lead to substantial growth and multiplication of your capital. How do investments work? When you talk about the market in finance, it's a place where people buy and sell things like stocks, small pieces of ownership in companies, and bonds, a form of lending to companies or governments. To be part of this, you need an investment account, like a brokerage account, where you can put your money to buy these financial things. This account can be set up with well-known firms such as Schwab or Fidelity, just like how you open a bank account. When companies need money for their operations or growth, they use the market to ask for loans or raise funds. They do this by issuing stocks or bonds. Stocks represent a share of ownership in a company, and bonds are like loans from investors. People who buy bonds get paid back with interest over time, Stocks reflect ownership in a company and can be bought and sold publicly in the market. The price of a stock often reflects the company's value, but this price can change every day based on what people are willing to pay. Stocks are riskier because if something goes wrong with a company, the stock price might fall, causing losses for those who bought at higher prices. In the market, you make or lose money by buying things at one price 
and selling them at another. For example, if you buy something for $10 and sell it for 15 you make $5. But if you buy at $15 and sell at $10, you lose $5. The gains or losses only become real when you sell the asset. If you bought a stock for $10 and it falls to 6 you'll only lose that $4 if you sell it at 6 Maybe you wait a while and sell the stock at $11, making $1 per share. Are you investing reasonably? Understanding where to invest your money involves careful consideration and balancing the risks associated with various investment options. It's vital to know that the best risk an investor can take is a calculated one. But how do you calculate this risk and distinguish a smart investment from a risky one? The terms smart and risky are not the same for everyone and depend on various factors. These can include your age, amount of debt, family status, and your comfort level with risk. Generally, younger investors who have many years before retirement are often encouraged to have portfolios with a higher risk profile. Having a longer investment horizon means that these investors have more time to endure the market's fluctuations. Ideally, they're in a position to keep contributing to their investments allowing them to ride out the market's ups and downs. In contrast, individuals approaching retirement or already retired are more vulnerable to market changes. For instance, if you rely on your investment accounts for your living expenses, a downturn in the market could force you to withdraw funds during a period of lower market value. This not only diminishes your portfolio, but might also result in substantial investment losses. A portfolio that takes higher risks would generally contain more stocks and fewer, if any, bonds. As younger investors mature and need to decrease the risks in their portfolios, they tend to reduce their investment in stocks and increase their investment in bonds for a more balanced approach. Additionally, life's changing circumstances significantly influence investments. Being realistic about your current financial situation can help you make clear and informed decisions about where to allocate your funds, considering the associated risks and returns. Are you building wealth that lasts? Generating returns that are higher than the average usually involves assuming higher than average risks in the world of investing. When you aim to grow your wealth and ensure financial stability in the long run, it's important to remember that there are no easy wins or freebies in the investment game. As you work toward building your wealth and securing your financial future, it's crucial to stay focused on three fundamental long-term investment principles. Number one, build a just-in-case nest egg. Having an emergency fund is crucial in avoiding financial difficulties. It's quite alarming that around one-fourth of Americans don't have such savings, making it crucial to steer clear of this situation. While retirement savings are crucial for the future, Accessing these funds before retirement often incurs substantial tax penalties. To prevent falling into this predicament, building an emergency fund is essential. This fund should ideally cover around three to six months of your usual living expenses, as discussed earlier. One of the most impactful things you can do to secure your financial future is to make saving an automatic process. This involves setting up an arrangement with your bank to regularly transfer a portion of your paycheck directly into a dedicated savings account. This automated system ensures consistent savings without relying on you to actively set money aside each time. The emergency fund should be maintained in a low-risk account, such as a standard savings or checking account, and should remain liquid, ensuring that the funds are easily accessible whenever you may need them. Once this fund is established, Further savings can be allocated based on your risk tolerance and invested accordingly for the future. Number two, steer savings in the right direction. When you decide to invest your money, it's essential to determine the right balance between how much you want to put into riskier assets like stocks and safer assets like cash and bonds. This balance mainly depends on your comfort level with risk how much you're okay with your investments potentially going up and down. For instance, younger individuals who have many years before retirement might feel comfortable having almost all their investments in stocks. However, someone closer to retirement might want more of their investments in bonds, which are generally less risky. For those who are new to investing, 
I suggest considering mutual funds or ETFs instead of investing in individual stocks, especially if the amount you're investing is not very large. Mutual funds or ETFs are like baskets that hold a mix of different stocks, bonds, or other types of investments. They help spread out your risk because you're not putting all your money into one company. Diversification, which means spreading your investments across different types of assets, is really important. It helps lower the risk that your whole investment might lose value if the market goes down. Look for funds that have a good history of performance and don't charge too much in fees. You can find this kind of information in various financial news sources or websites like Morningstar or Yahoo Finance. Once you're ready to move into investing in individual stocks, do some solid research on the companies you're interested in. Look at their history. How well have they done in the past? Also, consider their management. Are they skilled and trustworthy? See if the stock price is fair or reasonable. And think about whether investing in this company will add variety to your investments or if it's very similar to what you already have. It's essential to take your time in this step to make informed decisions about your investments. Number three, make variety. A theme of your investments. Diversifying your investments across different types is a crucial move in building your wealth. Relying solely on one stock or a single market success might not be the best strategy for your financial future. That's where the concept of diversification comes into play. Although we often hear more about stocks, it's not wise to put all your eggs in one basket depending on your financial situation and how comfortable you are with risk. It might be smart to consider other investment options, such as private equity, venture capital, precious metals, commodities, and real estate. These investment avenues can help spread out your risk and provide diversification to your portfolio. Why is diversification important? Because these different types of investments often move independently from one another. They aren't connected in the same way stocks and bonds might be, meaning that while one investment might be decreasing in value, another could be increasing. A well-put-together investment plan should contain various types of assets that don't all move in the same direction at the same time. This can help reduce the unpredictability of your investments without necessarily lowering their potential to make money. Although these steps won't completely guarantee financial success, they're a great place to start. They can assist in saving money, creating a diversified investment plan, and setting you on the path to building wealth for a more secure financial future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload and you can enjoy the excellent content I send your way.